It doesn't take a big budget or a lot of tools to get started with knitting. Today I'm going to show you exactly what you need to purchase and how to get started on learning to knit. Fiber Junkies, welcome back to The Color Cauldron. I'm Johanna, the owner and dyer behind Potion Yarns and host of this podcast. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for stopping by again. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to our fabulous funky family called Fiber Junkies. Fiber Junkies are people who watch this Color Cauldron podcast and love to work with yarn and fiber to create things with their hands. Specifically, we love working with indie dyed yarn on this channel, although we also will dip into commercial uh, companies and big box store yarns from time to time as well and just talk about knitting and crochet and spinning in general but specifically we extra extra love to work with indie dyed yarns and unique works of art and quality uh, products that have a little bit more love and artistry put into them than just your traditional run-of-the-mill stuff. Today we're going to do something a little bit different though. This is the video that you are going to want to show to all of your friends who are thinking about dipping their toes into the world of knitting. We are going to do a beginner knitter episode. So this is for you if you have never knit before, if you know nothing about knitting, but you're wanting to get started and you just don't know where to start and you don't have anybody to teach you or maybe they showed you and then you came home and totally forgot how to do the knit stitch or what you need to go buy at the store or whatever. Um, this is for you. This is the ground one, square one starting space. You have nothing, you have no yarn or tools or anything. We're gonna start here. If you already know how to knit and you're fabulous at it, uh, you still may want to stick around just because it's kind of fun. We're going to go on a little field trip today, take a little trip out to the store and things. I'd also love to have you guys comment if you are a um, longtime knitter, if you are a proficient knitter. I would love for you guys to leave comments below and help cover anything that I may have missed, skipped over, or just given a little bit of information. You can elaborate on something, any of your tips for brand new basic beginning knitters. To start off, I wanted to give you a quick intro. So um, basically, if you are wanting to learn to knit, you don't have to know anything about yarn or fiber ahead of time. And we're gonna show you exactly what you need to buy at the store. And then I am going to show you a quick and easy cast on and how to do the basic knit stitch. That's all we're gonna cover today. And that's gonna be plenty to get you started. It's going to be the knitted on cast on so that you can learn um, a simple movement that will create both your cast on and then with a very, very slight alteration will create your knit stitch as opposed to having to learn how to cast on and then also learn another technique to knit it. Now, one thing I did want to go over is when we go on our field trip, we are going to be looking at commercial yarns, not indie dyed yarns. And most of the commercial yarns that we'll be looking at are going to come in a skein that is in a different type of put up, which means it just, it looks different and it's ready to knit right from the ball when you pick it up at the store. If you're purchasing yarn from me, another indie dyer, or some of your, uh, if you have a local yarn store, your local yarn store, or um, some of the more high high-end companies, they're often going to, not always, but often going to be selling their yarn in a skein, which is what this is. Some people call it a skein, um, I call it a skein, and uh, this is basically just a loop of yarn. So if you unravel this, it's a big circle, a big loop of yarn that is tied together so that it won't unravel. And then people have just taken it and twisted it up into this skein. So in order to knit from this, you would take out the end right here, like this. And then see, it's gonna unfurl. Now you get a loop of yarn. You have a nice big loop. This is one of my hand dyed skeins. So you have this nice loop of yarn. If you just cut the end right here and start to knit from it, you are very quickly going to have a big, huge, snarled, tangled mess. And we don't want that. That is just going to make everybody's life miserable. So rather than knitting directly from it, you're going to need to wind it into a cake or a ball of yarn. I do have a video on my channel. If you go back and look through it, I do have a video that um, explains how you can wind your yarn from a hank and why you need to do that. It gives you great details on um, how to use a yarn 
winder and a swift, a ball winder and a swift, if you have those tools or if you have access to those tools. But if you're a brand new beginning knitter and you have no yarn or needles or anything, you probably don't have a yarn swift and you do not need one to begin with. Um, if you can have access to one, if you have a friend who has one, a knitting or crochet friend who has a yarn swift, it's really helpful because then you can create these center pole ball balls. This is the same color as this. It's just been wound into what's called a cake of yarn. So this way I can knit from the outside of the ball with this strand that's hanging free, or I can pull from the inside corner. There's a strand in there and you can pull it out and you can knit right from the ball so it's not rolling all around. Um, that's an excellent way to do it. However, if you're just starting out, you don't need to go rush out and buy a Swift because who knows, you may not even stick with this long term, right? So we wanna keep our expenses to a minimum when we're starting. So what I would recommend is that you hand wind that ball. And I, um, as I mentioned, I have a video about winding your yarn before you use it. Go check that out. It's pretty short, I think five or six minutes. For our field trip today, we're going to be going to a big box craft store, a more commercial craft store where you're gonna be um, purchasing non-indie skeins. So it'll be bigger companies that are creating skeins of yarn that are already in a ball form that you can knit right from. We're just gonna start with super simple basics that are already prepared for you so you don't have to spend a lot of time worrying about tangles or messing with anything before you just jump in and get started. Let's hit the road and go check those out. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to buy and we're gonna get a budget for you. Okay, so here we are in the knitting section of the store. There's gonna be some yarn and things and there should be an aisle where you'll find needles and crochet hooks and all the little notions that you need, darning needles and little cutters and scissors and stitch markers and counters and all of those things. It's really easy to get overwhelmed. It's also really easy to think you need to buy something from a little bit of everything, but I'm just gonna show you. Remember, we're just talking about things to get started. So, um, if this is your very, very, very first time ever, there are a couple of different brands and styles of needles. You don't need to buy um, what I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna give you two options, but you can buy whichever one is in your budget and whichever one you think you would like the best. But I'm gonna give you two options of needle styles and then tell you my favorites from just like a basic big box store or you can find these on Amazon as well. So first off, our very first style that is very, very um, traditional and what most people learn to knit on is gonna be what's called a straight needle. It says right here. So they just look like two long straight needles with a little end cap on each one. And they have them in all these lovely different colors and sizes. If you're on a budget, economy is the way to go. So look for the Susan Bates or something similar to that. Um, and they're gonna be in that like four to $5 range per set. I am going to pick up a size eight it has a little eight on it. Um, it'll also usually say eight US five millimeter. That's the size. If you're in another country other than the US, a lot of times they go by millimeters and instead of numbers. In the United States, we go by needle sizes and the larger the number, the bigger the needle. So we're gonna go with an eight. Um, you could also choose a size nine. Um, really, it's not gonna matter too much. You can pick whichever one you want, but if you're just starting out, I recommend going right in the middle around an eight, a nine, or even a 10. Um, and those would be a really good starter one for you, but they have all different um, numbers. And largely that's gonna be based on what you're making and what um, size of yarn that you use. If you have a pattern, you will need to consult the pattern and it will give you an idea of what size you need to buy. It'll usually say like US size six, US size eight, whatever. We'll look at a pattern a little bit later um, to show you guys how to read a pattern and get an idea. But assuming that you have nothing already, you're just starting out, this is your very first time, just to knit some practice stuff and a basic scarf you don't need a pattern for, get a size eight or a nine. Okay, so that's the first option. The second option you can get is jumping right to a circular needle. Circular needles are my personal favorite and the way that I do most of my knitting these days because once you start knitting in the round, assuming that you fall in love with this and take off with it, you're going to need a circular needle. Circular needles are two needle tips and they're connected by a cable. It's all wound up in a circle here, but if you stretch it out, it'll stretch really, really long, and it is a cable. They have short cables for little socks and small circumferences and really long cables. The way you shop for a circular needle is at the top again, it'll say the millimeter size, four millimeter. The US size is a six, so size six. 
29 inches refers to how long the cable is of your needle. So if you're knitting something really small, like a hat, you're gonna want something like a 16 inch cable so it'll go around your head or something. If you're knitting a sweater, you're gonna need something larger like 29, 36, 48 inches, depending on how big it is that you are knitting. There are hacks that we'll talk about later. Um, so if this is your very first time and you don't know, but you're like, heck yeah, let's just jump right into the circulars so I don't buy straight needles now and then have to come back later and buy more needles. If you're on a budget, go right for the circular needles because you can knit back and forth on them just like you would with a straight needle. You just won't join them in the round. You'll just knit across and then turn it around. What I like about straight needles even for, or circular needles, even for straight knitting, is that you don't have to worry about dropping one of your needles or losing one. They're connected by the cable, so you keep your set of needles together all the time. I can't tell you the number of needles I have lost on airplanes, in the car, in my couch, etc., because I drop one um, or I set down my project and then come back later and one of them is missing. So I love circular needles because they keep them together and make it really easy to go either straight knitting or circular knitting. Again, Susan Bates or some other similar brand, there are multiple other affordable brands out there. Circular needles are probably gonna run you a dollar or two more than the straight needles up front. But again, they have that versatility factor. So you can spend six or $7 on a needle now and then still have it when you go to circular knitting. Whereas if you buy the straight needles now and then you get into circular knitting, you're gonna spend $5 on a set of straight needles and then you'll have to come back and spend another six or seven on a pair of circular needles later. I personally don't like the aluminum or plastic needles as much as I like wooden needles. So bamboo or wood needles are my personal favorites. And this Clover brand, which has the distinctive green packaging, is one of my very favorite affordable circular needles. They're a little bit higher quality. They have a softer sound to them. They just feel warmer and more natural and organic in my hands. So I personally prefer them. They also are not as slippery on the wool. They have a little bit more catch to them. So your stitches don't slip off the needle as easily as a metal needle. But that is a personal preference. And um, some people strongly prefer the um, plastic or aluminum needles. The nice thing about metal needles is they don't break as easily as the wooden ones, especially if you start getting into smaller sizes like a one or a two. I can't tell you the number of size one wooden needles I have broken over the years. Um, any little stress and it will snap. So you might want to consider doing a um, metal needle to start, but it's really just personal preference and what your budget can afford. As you can see, these wooden ones are a little bit pricier, but again, to me, they're a, a higher quality, so it's worth it. Okay, so over here we have some of the other notions. These are really, really fun and you'll eventually need to get into buying cable needles and um, stitch markers and all of those things. For right now, you don't need anything. You can make your own stitch markers by using um, little zip ties or um, twist ties that you just make a little ring and wrap around your needle if you're on a super tight budget. But if you want to, um, it never hurts to have some on hand. I would recommend some of these little plastic interlocking ring needles. You can get a whole pack of 20 of them for just a couple of dollars at one of these big stores. I think this one is four or five dollars for the pack of 20. They also have some of these ones. I don't like these ones as well because they slip off my needles. They don't have the locking mechanism. They just slip on and so they fall off really easily but these are a little bit cheaper um, these ones are even cheaper if you like those that just like slip on the needle and they have them in different sizes for different size needles these are the ones oops, excuse me these are the ones I use the most at home when I'm not using my fancy awesome ones that I buy from makers on Etsy and um, independent websites but if you are trying to stay on a budget and just test out and see if you like this knitting thing this is a good way to go and again, I'd recommend getting those if you have a few extra dollars, but if you don't, don't worry about it. You probably won't need them just to get started. Okay, here we are in the yarn aisle, one of the many yarn aisles. Um, depending on how big your store is that you go to, if you go to one of the larger craft chain stores, there will usually be at least two or three aisles stuffed full of wool and cotton and acrylic and just all kinds of yarns, mostly acrylic here, but um, lots of different types of yarns. And it can get really overwhelming if you are brand new and you have no idea where to start. So we're gonna go over a couple of things and I, the thing I want you to keep in mind is that it's not so much the actual brand that you choose at this stage, because most of these yarns are gonna be pretty comparable. It's more about the specifics of the yarn. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things to look for. Um, so most of the affordable, like inexpensive yarn that you find at these local craft stores, these chain craft stores are going to be um, acrylic or acrylic blends because it is a man-made fiber, it is easier to produce, it is cheaper to produce, and it's very easy to get um, 
solid even dyes and large box companies can um, produce large amounts of the same type of colors and everything, big dye lots, and send them out to stores relatively affordably. So you can see the prices on this yarn are gonna range anywhere from like a couple dollars to maybe $10 a skein. These ones are kind of right in the middle, right around five, but um, that will be, be based on your area and the store you go into, the fiber content. Um, these ones over here that are dyed multiple colors are gonna be a little bit more expensive because of the dye processes, but they're gonna be really, really affordable as opposed to like the nicer quality yarns, indie dyed yarns and um, fabulous fibers like cashmere and alpaca are gonna go up. So when we're just getting started, we don't wanna waste a lot of money um, and ruin some really, really nice yarns. So we're just gonna start with some basic, simple, easy stuff that if, if we mess it up, we're not out too many dollars, right? Okay, so I've picked up a skein here. Um, we're gonna look on the back of the ball band. Here it's gonna tell you the name, grape or raisin. Um, this number here is going to be like a die lot number, so if you're buying multiples, you'll want to try to match up the numbers at the top as much as possible. Um, and then here it tells you the fiber content, 100% acrylic. It has some um, suggestions for how much you need. If you're making a hat, you can get away with one skein. If you're making a scarf, you're going to need two probably. If you're making a sweater, you'll probably need around six or more depending on what size you make. So that's really helpful. Um, but here's the important part that you want to look for. You want to look for this number right here. On a lot of big box store yarns, they're going to have a number from 1 to 6 um, or 0 to 6, and that will tell you how thick the yarn is. So if you are looking for, um, you know, a finer yarn to make socks or something, you're going to want a 1 or a 2. If We are going to be going for the number 4. Number 4 is the easiest one to find at most of the big box stores. It's a worsted weight and it's the most common basic starter wool. It's not super, super thin, so it'll go relatively quickly, but it's not um, super, super chunky, so you can still make sweaters and hats and scarves that have a bit of drape and things like that. So look for something that has that number four and says medium on it. If it says worsted weight or Aran weight, that's another indication, but most of these ones don't say that, they just have the little number. And then it's gonna tell you right here, the ounce or grams, so how heavy it is, and then how many yards you get. This one has 246 yards, 225 meters, depending on whether you do yards or meters. So if you have a pattern, you'll need to look and see how many yards they require for the pattern, or you can just make up your own pattern, um, like we're gonna be learning how to do just a garter stitch scarf. So I would go with the recommended two balls so you can make it long enough, so you'll buy two of these. And then we'll start knitting with them. Again, it doesn't really matter which brand you get. Um, that one was from Lion Brand. I like Lion Brand as far as a general, like they have really good quality for some of their lower end yarns. Um, and they just feel a little bit better. They wear a little bit better, but basically you just wanna look for that number four. Okay, so let's get started with casting on. So I've got my Susan Bates needles um, that we picked up at the store. These are a size 10 and a half can see right there. Um, so this is gonna be 6.5 millimeters. And these are just the like cheap aluminum, brightly colored. They're just a good like kind of retro basic starter. Um, like I said, you can pick the nice wooden ones if you want something fancy. And then this is a skein of Knit Picks Swish Worsted, which is just their, um, I think it's just, uh, oh, it is a merino wool, but um, it's basically gonna be that number four, that size four. In fact, if you look closely, you can see that little four right there on the skein. And here it tells you the fiber content, um, the gauge, so what type of needles you'd wanna use. They say six to nine. I'm gonna use the 10 and a half, but it doesn't really matter for this because we're not working off a pattern. Now this is gonna be, um, the center of the ball is in here and then the outside is out here. So you can pull either one that you want. Uh, this is going to be similar to like what you would purchase at the store like when we were on our field trip. And I'm just going to use the outside of the ball, but you can use either one. The inside is helpful because it doesn't roll around while you're using it, but the outside is easier to get to. And sometimes the inside of these center pole skeins doesn't come out really easily. And then a big, huge like glob of yarn barf comes out and that's no fun. So to get started, we're going to need to make a slip knot. Um, so you're going to take this end of the yarn. Um, and then we're just gonna leave a little tail, like maybe five or six inches. Um, you can leave longer than that, depending on what type of cast on you are doing, they will tell you to do longer or shorter, but we're just gonna leave about this much of yarn. And then to make a slip knot, I'm gonna take the free end here, and I'm going to loop it around my two fingers, like that, and it crosses in front, so it makes that little X. Hold that, and I'm going to reach through, 
and pull up the yarn and pull down on your free end like that okay now the great thing about this is I can make it bigger or I can make it smaller so you're gonna make a slip knot so slip your slip knot onto the needle and you're gonna tighten it and if you look really closely there's a little bit of see-through at the bottom, but it's not a lot. You don't want it to be so tight that you can't move it. It should um, slip around easily on your needle, back and forth pretty easily, but you don't want it to be so loose that it's gonna slip off too easily. So to cast on with the knitted cast on, you're gonna hold this needle that has the slip knot in your left hand. We're gonna do the English or throwing method for this video, there is also Continental where you hold it in the other hand, but we're gonna do the thrown method with the English style. You're gonna take your other needle in your right hand and you're gonna slip it from the front to the back under that loop, see that? Under that loop from front to back, so your needles cross. Then you're going to take this working yarn and you're going to wrap it around the needle. And then I like to hold on to this little where my slip knot is right below the slip knot, hold that taut so it doesn't slip. And I want you to find the window and push your point through. So you're moving this needle from the back through the window to the front. Now, you're going to take this and let it, let it get a little bigger, pull it up and put it back on the needle. So now you have two loops, right? Now you're gonna do it again. You're gonna slip it under from the front to the back Take the yarn, wrap it around, pull it through the window, and put that stitch on the needle. Okay, so this is the knitted method, and you're gonna keep doing that until you have enough stitches, however many stitches that you want. Okay, so now we have our cast on stitches, right? We've just knitted a cast on. I've done 15 stitches, but you can do however many you would like. If you're wanting to do a scarf, I'd recommend at least 25 of a worsted weight, possibly larger. 25 to 40 is good for a scarf. Um, if you wanna do a pot holder or something like that, you might need to adjust accordingly, but we're just gonna do a practice swatch. So I'm just doing 15 to start. So here's where it gets really fun. You already know the knit stitch because we just used it to cast on. So now you're going to basically do the same thing again with a slight twist. So we pop it in from front to back. And then we're taking this, sorry, I wrap mine really weird around my hand. So if you're, if you're not, you can just take it like this around, pull it through the window. Now, normally I told you to put it back, put the stitch back on, right? So when we're casting on, but this time you're actually not gonna do that. You're going to slide this to the tip. So take the old stitch to the tip of your needle and slip it off. Okay, and now you've just knitted a stitch. So from front to back, slip that yarn around, pop it through the window, and slip it off. I'm gonna try to remember how I used to hold this before I came up with my crazy weird way. So front to back, slip it around, through the window, and off. And you'll just do that until you get to the end of your row. Now, what will come with practice, it's probably gonna look kinda rough the first couple times that you do it. That's normal. But what comes with practice is that you can eventually, oops, oops, get to the point where your tension is even, so all your stitches look very much the same. When you first start, it's very common to have your stitches be either super, super loose or super, super tight, and you're like struggling to even get it under the loop and get your needle in the stitch. If you're struggling to get it through this first part here where you slip it in the stitch, then you are probably knitting too tight and you need to loosen up and not hold your yarn so tightly, okay? This is where going to a class or going into your local yarn store or working with a friend who already knows how to knit can be really, really helpful because they can help you identify when you're being too loose or too tight and fix that, okay? So once we get done, sorry, I did that really fast. Once we get done, we have all of our stitches over onto the right-hand needle. So now you're just going to take that and flip it around. Same thing if you bought a circular needle, you would just flip it around 
it's just connected on the end member, but you'd still do the same thing. So now all of these stitches will be in your left hand and your free needle is your right hand again. And then you're gonna go back and just do the same thing again. When you go back and do the same thing again, this is called garter stitch. You knit every stitch on every row, called garter stitch, okay? It's the most basic beginning stitch because you just do the same thing over and over. After a while, you'll learn to purl where you're basically doing the stitch, same stitch but backwards in reverse. I know it sounds scary right now, but it's not. It's actually quite fun and easy once you get the hang of it. But we will do that in another video. There's a bunch of videos out there already. If you're super eager to get started, go ahead and just search for how to purl. But I would practice until you get the hang of this first. And that is the throwing method or English method, knitting in garter stitch. Okay, so I hope that was really helpful for you. I hope that that gave you a really good starting base, just some things to go look at, um, exactly what you need, and enough inspiration to get you started. I did wanna give you guys a few more resources because I um, this is obviously just a short video to get you started on the path. This isn't going to be a step-by-step, -step, we're gonna do you know knitting from the ground up every single week, give you a new technique or stitch or whatever. I'm gonna try to work some of those in from time to time, but we talk about a lot of things on this podcast and I have a wide range of people out there watching who already know those things. So we're going to um, just be sprinkling in little bits here and there for the beginners, but there are a lot of resources out there for you and I wanted to give you some of those so I don't just leave you high and dry with only one cast on in the knit stitch, right? So once you get some stuff knitted a little ways, once you get a nice square for a pot holder or a rectangle for a scarf or whatever it is that you're making to begin with, um, you are going to eventually want to cast off, which is what we call um, ending our our project so it's basically when you um, get all of those live stitches off of your needle so that they won't just unravel you have to like close up those stitches and end the project at some point eventually you run out of yarn or you just get sick of it or whatever so you have to end it at some point so my number one resource for cast ons cast offs how to buy yarn YouTube is going to be your best friend. It's free. It's easy. You can access it at any time of the day or night as long as you have an internet connection. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful resource. As an advanced knitter, someone who's been doing this for over 10 years, I still use YouTube a lot. It is my number one go-to resource when I need help remembering a technique or I am looking for a new technique. So there are literally thousands if not millions of resources on YouTube, totally free. So definitely check that out. Some of you guys are gonna learn a little bit better if you have someone actually there showing you instead of just a video or if you can read something. So there are other resources as well. Google is again, one of your best friends. There are hundreds if not millions of knitting blogs out there and a lot of them will cover basics like getting started, casting on and casting off, choosing yarn, doing the knit stitch. They'll have photos um, to walk you through like photo tutorials. There are uh, websites and pages that are specifically dedicated to providing free basic knitting information so that they will have how to do the knit stitch and they, they'll have it different ways. There are people who knit um, English style and there are people who knit continental style. Um, um, both of those, it's basically just whether you carry the yarn in your right hand or your left hand um, and a little bit different tensioning and holding your needles. But basically, whichever style works for you, you can look up videos or articles on the internet and find all kinds of resources. Another really great resource though that you may not have thought about is a local yarn store, also known as an LYS for local yarn store. This is generally a store that is, it's oftentimes a boutique style store, smaller, not a huge big store, and they're typically built around providing knitting only tools and supplies, or sometimes there will be a knitting and a fabric store, or knit, like one in my town is knitting and needlepoint. Um, so they provide all of the yarns and tools and classes and training that you need for those types of handmade fiber skills. Um, so if you can find a local yarn store in your area, they are an invaluable resource. You can usually go in there and just say, hey, I'm brand new to knitting and I forgot how to do the knit stitch or I need to learn how to do it. Do you have any classes? They will generally have a lot of classes that you can purchase tickets for. Um, you can have a paid for class 
or sometimes they will offer one-on-one -on -one instruction. You just pay an hourly rate and you can sit down with someone who will meet with you one-on-one -on -one and walk you through your project, fix mistakes, help you get started or move forward or progress or whatever. Um, so you should be prepared to pay for it in those instances. However, you should always, always ask what their free resources are because most local yarn stores that I have been in all around the country will offer some type of free resource. It's in their best interest to get you obsessed with knitting, right? So quite frequently, they will have a free knitting class. It might only be a half hour and it might only just barely cover the basics, but it will at least get you started and give you a chance to ask questions and get an idea of if this thing is for you and, and how to work with it. And many of the teachers in many local yarn stores are quite knowledgeable and can give you even more information than I have here. Local public libraries are an excellent resource to get free books. In addition to blogs and free resources online, you can check out knitting books and many of them will have um, basic stitches and how to cast on and cast off in the back, um, in the, either in the very front or the very back of pattern books. They will often have um, all of that information with like photo tutorials and how to do certain things. Um, some of them only show advanced techniques and assume that you know how to do it, but some of them are specifically geared toward the beginner. So check out those books. You can always go just up to the desk, ask the local librarian where their knitting books are, or if you're brand brand new, I would even recommend, um, since I don't have any exact titles to give you, I would recommend um, asking your librarian and just saying, hey, I'm wanting to get started knitting, I am brand new, so do you have any books on how to teach yourself to knit or on how to get started knitting? And almost every library is going to have at least one or two that you can use. Um, if you don't like talking to somebody or you're in a rush or whatever, I, my mother is a librarian and I happen to spend a lot of time in local libraries and I happen to spend most of that time in the knitting section. <laughs> so I can tell you that if you go to 746 in the Dewey Decimal System, you should be able to find the crafting and knitting books. So, um, knitting and crochet and needlepoint and lace making are usually all right in that same section. So look in the 746-ish range right around there or just ask your local librarian. Okay, I hope that was enough to get you guys started. I am so glad that you are gonna try out knitting. It's a really, really wonderful craft, a wonderful skill, and uh, I think you're really gonna love it. So that's all we have today. It is now time to cast off. Love you.